nothing of any significance was ever accomplished by a single man acting alone. I like that quote by John Maxwell because it serves as a reminder that regardless of who we are, where we've come from, or how able we are, we all need support in different shapes and in different forms in order to try and achieve our hopes and our dreams. Now, shortly after I was born, I was diagnosed with a very, very serious congenital heart defect. My family noticed quite quickly that something was indeed very, very wrong. I wasn't eating very well, and I was sleeping most of the time. And so my very stressed out mother raced me towards the nearest medical surgery. And unfortunately, they were fully booked. And to make matters even worse, they thought my mother was overreacting. For you see, only two years previously, my older sister Melissa had passed away five days after she was born with a very similar heart condition. Now luckily, or rather unluckily, depending on how you look at it, I went to massive chronic heart failure then and there in the medical surgery. My family were told that had I not been brought in when I was, I would have surely have died in the middle of the night. And so I was whisked away to the opposite side of the country for life-saving surgery. Once I arrived, medical professionals placed an artificial heart valve deep within my chest. I was only two months old. Follow-up surgeries would have this artificial heart valve replaced when I was two years old, and then again several years later when I was 14. And as we can all see, I'm not dead. So clearly, (laughs) these surgeries were a resounding success. So, please enjoy a picture of me in a swing. And so, life continued as per normal as it was meant to be. I was developing rather well despite my rockiest start to life. I was achieving all of the milestones, academically anyway. However, socially, something really wasn't quite right. And it's this very topic that I will be discussing with all of you here today. And so, when I was eight years old, I was diagnosed as being on the autism spectrum. This was back in the 1990s when we didn't know very much about what autism really was at the time. Suddenly, bullying, loneliness, and social challenges, well, they all became my norm. And to make matters even more interesting, the same year that I was diagnosed, my parents decided to get divorced. So just as I was coming to terms with being different, things were rapidly changing back at home. However, despite these rapidly changing dynamics, uh, home was always a very safe place. I knew that if I were having any dramas at school, I could always return to the safety and comforts of my home. Any additional supports that I needed, whether they be speech therapy, social skills development, or even a play date with friends, all of that was readily available to me. School was wonderful, and school was very difficult, but I loved learning. I was obsessed with reading and trains. Of course, Thomas the Tank Engine was my jam. And my closest friend was the school librarian, and she does look a little bit like Mary Poppins. We had a lot in common. She thought I was cool, and like me, she loved to read. However, making more age-appropriate friends I found kind of incredibly difficult. The actual making of them, well, that was the easy part. However, keeping them, that was another story entirely. In fact, school would have been the absolute perfect place had all the other children stayed at home. (laughs) I had attended several different private schools, a luxury not many on the autism spectrum are afforded. And my experiences within these private schools taught me that regardless of where you go to for an education, and regardless of where you go to for work, the people that surround you in these environments should ideally be an extension of your family, a very supportive family. That support, I found, is absolutely critical 
to our very success. Continuing on, my friends and family wide that were always there to guide me. Whenever I forgot to say hello, they would remind me his greetings did not seem to come naturally for me. Frequently, I would crash, burn, and feel overwhelmed, but they would always be there to pick me back up again and send me on my way so I could better try to fit in within this normal world that we all live in. Now, it's commonly said that living on the autism spectrum is like having an invisible disability. On the outside, we might appear smart and capable and competent, but on the inside, we might struggle with anxiety, be coping with depression, dealing with sensory issues or other individual challenges. Something as simple as talking on the phone, attending a family barbecue, or even going on a school excursion can be mentally exhausting for some. However, I felt my biggest challenges lay in trying to meet everybody's expectations and being reminded of my failures what felt like every five seconds. Often, it felt like my individual needs as a person did not seem to matter to anybody else. Even now, I often feel like I'm walking on eggshells, too afraid to express my opinion in fear of being openly criticized or being too blunt. Although I find this generally happens when I'm speaking to someone in a position of perceived authority. Even now, on stage during this very presentation, I'm second-guessing every word that comes out of my mouth. For the longest time, I believed that these communication issues that I've been led to believe that I have were only an autism-centric issue. However, as I've gotten older, and I've met more and more people from different walks of life, I've come to the realization that these communication issues actually affect everybody, regardless of who you are or where you've come from. And so, Entering adulthood, I wanted to earn a little extra money, much like my friends and my peers, by finding a part-time job. However, whereas teachers, mentors, and other supporters could help and protect me in an educational environment, entering into the workforce, I'd never experienced such cruel and relentless bullying. And then there was the issue of whether or not to disclose having a diagnosis. See, doing so to an employer during a job interview might make them feel uncomfortable. And in turn, I might miss out on a valuable opportunity. Although, if I stayed quiet and I did nothing, and issues arose down the line after being hired, then perhaps I was never entirely truthful in the first place. I'm damned if I do, and I'm damned if I don't. You can see my dilemma. Currently, in Australia, 20% of all individuals on the autism spectrum have been fired for not disclosing a diagnosis of autism to their employer. And so, I turned 18, and I managed to find employment at a local fast food restaurant very close to my home. And I decided not to disclose having an autism diagnosis. I received virtually no training and was berated five minutes into my very first shift for not really knowing what I was meant to be doing. In order to quell the manager's yelling, I reluctantly admitted that I was indeed on the autism spectrum. However, in response, she retorted in front of other staff and even the customers that had she known that I was on the autism spectrum, then she never would have hired me. This blatant discrimination would follow me from workplace to workplace. And I haven't even gotten started on my perfectionism, although this can be seen as a very positive trait to have. While I would always endeavor to do th uh, things properly, and I obviously still do, this would often slow my productivity. As job after job, workplace after workplace flew by, it became evident to me that this wasn't just affecting me, but also my family. However, on the upside, I had plenty of time to play video games. How could I not? I had all that free time. Assassin's Creed, Bioshock, Halo 3, Gears of War, those were the days, but don't laugh. Those skills with media, why well, they would come to help my career much further down the line. It would take me several years before I would manage to find employment with a supportive organization with a very supportive boss. 
To my complete surprise, I even won Employee of the Year, and I felt absolutely fantastic. Currently, the unemployment rate for individuals on the autism spectrum is 31.8%, with 45% reporting skills far higher than what is actually required for the jobs that they have. Many struggle to finish high school, let alone any post-school qualifications, and many find it difficult to find work centered on their likes and on their strengths. However, meta-analyses also suggest that people on the spectrum are some of the most dedicated, reliable, and consistent employees that you could ever want. So clearly, there is a mismatch. But why? To me, I feel that this is due to a mismatch of values. Everybody has in their heads a completely different idea of the perfect employee. And more often than not, people on the autism spectrum do not seem to fit within that social norm. But hey, those challenging bosses and you know the ones I'm talking about, they don't exactly fit within my ideals either. So perhaps there is a bit of a double standard, or maybe there isn't. I'll leave that entirely up to you. To elaborate further on what I mean, whenever I'm given an instruction by an employer that I think doesn't really make sense, I will openly question it. And when I do so, that can often be seen as confronting or even a little intimidating. However, my intention is to never hurt, harm, or even humiliate. It's to gather enough evidence so I can make well-informed choices, so I can deliver to you, the employer, exactly what you want. Employers often forget that there are two sides to every story. And more, more often than not, people on the spectrum are given the shorter end of the stick. And so, confused with my employment prospects, I applied to study a bachelor degree in film and television. And this degree took me five years, rather than the normal three, in order to complete. I deferred countless times because I believed I did not have the intelligence or the resilience in order to be able to finish. However, with the support of my family, particularly my mum, I was able to see the degree through to its rightful conclusion. And as you can see, she was very excited for me. These skills as a videographer, I managed to develop through my degree. And soon I was finding work within the disability, wedding and educational sectors, mainly as an editor. Even today, I was asked to film this very TEDx presentation. However, after meeting with the organizers of this event, they encouraged me to put down my camera for change and to apply as a speaker. You can imagine my great shock when I was actually selected to speak. And so there are mentors all around us, so I might not even realize it. Several years ago, I had the great fortune of attending my very first TEDx event. And it was there I would meet a lady that would go on to have a profound impact upon my life. As you can see, she was one of the speakers and she had a dream. And that dream was to put together a community of people on the spectrum that could work together, network together and thrive as one. It's people such as this, parents, mentors, teachers, friends and good, supportive, knowledgeable employers that can really make all the difference to our lives. Regardless of our ability, no one can do it alone, regardless of our ability. A couple of years ago, I decided to take, uh, to take this idea further by studying a master's degree in education, specializing in special needs education. And while I absolutely loved this study, it was not without its challenges. Currently, today, autism segregation is increasing and has been doing so over the last 15 years in Australia. While we're more inclusive on paper, ticking boxes, in reality, that's far from the case. Unfortunately, the situation is getting much worse. No case is this more prevalent than in our educational institutions, namely our schools and in our universities. And so, I issue a challenge to everybody today in this room to look deeper within the individual. Rather than tolerating the person that's standing in front of you, question the reason behind their actions and offer them any support that they might require. It might surprise you to know that you need us just as badly as we need you. 
And to my friends on the spectrum, please seek out the support you need. It is out there. You can find it. Try to rid yourselves of people that do not seem to have your best interests at heart. And don't settle for a life that doesn't fulfill you. Nothing of any significance was ever accomplished by a single person acting alone. We all need a helping hand. Thank you very much. Thank you.